All right, just a video on my Harbor Freight welding cart modifications. This is the cart you can get for 29 something on sale or with the coupon at Harbor Freight. This one and this one. This one is, I paid 85 I want to say, or $89 for this at the Air Gas Supply Store. This was, uh, when I bought the Miller, I got this cart for it. I've been happy with it until I actually got my first Harbor Freight cart and um, made a couple mods to it, and I'm much happier with this one than this one. The problem I was having was, though, when I was building this tractor barn out here, you can kind of see the side of it through the window there, um, it's pretty much done for now, um, except for the door that I'm going to put on it. So, But my wife wants me to build two more, so um, I decided to go ahead and build an off-road welding cart. Yeah, off-road welding cart, yeah. Dude, this is awesome. So but my problem I was having was when I was welding this, or rolling this out, through the dirt and kind of through the little ditch I have and over the rocks and over the stones that I have, or the paved stones that I have that are all irregular. Um, I almost dumped this over three or four times. It's got the 80 CF gas tank on the back. And then um, this Miller's heavy. I don't, this is an older 211. It's not the new one, um, newer version. So it's, it's probably eight or nine years old and it's heavy. It's a hundred pounds. And, um, it might be 80 pounds. It's heavy. I don't know how heavy it is, but it's at least 80 pounds. And then this tank on the back is another, I don't know how much. And so it was real tippy. I almost lost it several times and almost dumped it over. I was like, I don't want to dump my welder over and break something inside. Um, I'm not too worried about the cosmetics on the outside, but I didn't want to damage anything on it so uh, or rip any wires out. So I decided I'd build an off-road welding cart. This is the second cart that I bought, this Harbor Freight one. And it comes pretty good. I mean, it doesn't have a handle. When it, you know, you have to kind of grab it underneath here, and they made the shelf where you can grab it underneath here, drag it around. So I made this little handle for it, and this is all just little round stock I welded up and welded it underneath here. And um, this is super thin metal. This Harbor Freight uh, cart metal is super thin. I don't know, 16 gauge or something. It's thin. It's got to be maybe 18 gauge. It's small, and it's easy to burn through. So um, this handle's been just great, and. Uh, it's right about my waist height, so my hand, I don't have to reach down for it. I'm not reaching up for it. Right about where my hand just kind of falls, and I just kind of drag it around. Um, and it's worked really well. And I made one other cable hanger on this one. Let's see, there's a cable hanger here. These come with real sharp edges from the Harbor Freight factory, wherever that is. Uh, I think we all know where that is. And then, um, so I filed them down, and just so the cables wouldn't be caught on a sharp edge. I made it, so this is the other factory one, I made an extra one right here just out of uh, one inch, one eighth flat, and just bent it and drilled some holes in it and hung it there. Um, smoothed it off nicely on the edges, so. And so that's really the only mods I made on that cart. Uh, this cart's just about as narrow as the one I got from Air Gas, so they're pretty tippy, and when I rolled this arc welder out, this is a much lighter welder, obviously, this this arc welder, but it almost, almost dumped it over a couple times too, and I was like, this is retarded. So I'm just going to make a wider, so I've got another cart, I found one on sale, it's 29 something with a coupon, and um, I decided I'd get some of these big wheels for the back of it. These are the 10 inch wheels, my buddy talked me into not getting the pneumatic wheels, but the never flat wheels. Um, and those were more expensive. These were a little bit cheaper. These are just the hard wheels or the hard tires. They're just, there's no air in them. They're just kind of hard plastic rubber, I don't know what they are. But um, they're 5 8 uh, inner right here. This is 5 eighths round stock I have right here. And um, 10 inches here. And I forget what they were, just a few bucks, like eight bucks or something, six bucks or I don't know what they were. So basically what I did was I took out the old axle, which is a tube that's right underneath here. Um, that axle slides out, took off the old wheels, and then welded on this 5 eighths stock just all the way across here, this 5 eighths round. I just welded across and tack welded it in a few places um, where it stuck out, drilled a couple holes in the ends for the cotter pins, put a washer on the inside, washer on the outside, and then um, it's a little bit wider. And so the width was, let me get the measuring tape. The width was the, what I was trying to gain here. And how much width did I gain? Um, the stock Harbor Freight is about 15 wide at those little wheels. And those are little tiny wheels. They don't roll very good on the dirt at all. And so I'll try to hold this still here. Get it to the edge there. And then over here, it's just about 19. So I got about four more inches wide, um, which is nice. 
and this cart also is pretty narrow and that's fine for the shop floor for the garage but if you're rolling around outside it's going to be a little tippy even if you just get a little bit of an angle now as far as the front goes these casters are swivel casters and um, what I did was I got match this height right here from the bottom of the wheel to the top flat part of the caster that has the uh, mounting holes in it the plate to and it's about the same height as the axle down to the ground so that kept this part right here pretty flat so it's not tipped up or tipped down too much if that makes sense also I put that rear axle on with the bigger tires first and I had bolted these wheels into the regular bolting locations here and here but when these wheels both get turned this way which is unlikely but if they were to both get turned to the, sorry about that, if they were both get turned to the inside like that, if you can imagine if they weren't out there, if they were in here and they're both facing each other, it's, they're pretty narrow. And so now I have like this tripod effect where it wants to tip one way or the other on the front. Um, you can see how small the stock Harbor Freight casters are compared to these. Okay. So, <clears throat> These will roll better in the dirt. I'm not too worried about dirt getting on them. Um, though they roll a whole lot better on the pipe, on the uh, concrete in here. And so I decided since it was so narrow, I just took this 3 16 flat, and I don't know how wide it is, but uh, I made it 19 inches wide to match the back axles, and uh, so it wouldn't be really sticking out much more past the axle, uh, the rear axle, and then um, welded those on. And I started to drill holes in this 3 16 for the casters and to bolt it to the frame here. I was like, this is retarded. Uh, so I just ground it and welded it up in like, like literally three minutes, the whole thing was done. Uh, once I had the metal ground off and the metal clean, I just welded it up and it's a done deal. Uh, hopefully it'll never move. Now I was worried that this would be kind of wide and stick out much more than the stock uh, factory design. And it doesn't take up much floor space, but with all these cables hanging off over here, um, they really stick out. And so, I was worried about taking up floor space, but those stick out so far anyway. I'm, I guess I'm not too worried about that. The other thing I did was um, I made, oh, instead of making these out of the flat strap, these cable hangers, like I did here, um, I just bought these at Tractor Supply. These were like $2.99 or $3 a piece or something. So they uh, are a little bit wider, and I got four. I had to pound these flat. They're kind of thick right here. Um, and I just pounded them flat and then put use the regular hardware here because <clears throat> the screws that Harbor Freight sends are not very long. So you can see it holds. I mean, it holds. This is 40 feet of cable here, and this is 40 feet of cable here, and it holds it pretty well. And I put one on the front and one on the back just so it wouldn't be hanging on one. I wouldn't have to make a whole bunch of small loops. I could still make bigger loops, and then it wouldn't drag the tire or drag the ground. So it stays off the tire there, stays off the ground, and... Um, I still have a place to hang the grounding clamp. And I made the same handle here that I made for this one, except I made it a little bit different this time. And uh, I think if I were to do it a third time, I would use this round stock all the way around here. I just use the round here, here, and here. And then you can see that I welded it to flat right here. And this is just one eighth, I don't know what that is, a little bit of an inch or so. Um, all the way back to right here. Now the problem I had with it is this is so thin here um, I was trying to weld it across the top here. even one of my lowest settings on my MIG welder trying to get it way down I was still melting it and just burning through on this top edge. This bottom edge here is an angle where it comes along here and then it angles up behind this uh, piece of flat that I put on here so I didn't burn through here or I didn't burn it through as much um, but the weld is fine. I mean, it's, it's more than plenty to hold it. And then I welded it right across here. Okay, so this handle's pretty much the same height, about the same diameter and everything, and it's a great, uh, great height for me. If I was much taller, of course, it'd be a little short. Um, but it's very comfortable to roll around. This thing just rolls around like a dream now. And even with weight on it, it's super comfortable. Even when I put a lot of weight on it, like the MIG welder on it, it's very, very comfortable. So those are the mods. I think this is going to be good for my next projects that I have to do outdoors. So now I can stick either welder on it. I can stick the MIG welder on it or the arc welder and uh, roll it around. I'll probably run a bungee cord 
Um, I got to figure out how I'm going to do that. I'm going to probably drill a hole right here so I can hook a bungee cord right here and then run it up over the top or a strap or something just to keep it attached to the top. So if it does get tippy for whatever reason, it won't like tip off. Okay. One of the things that people complain about about this hardware or this Harbor Freight uh, uh, tray is it has a lip. And this lip here gets in the way when you open your MIG welder door. So some people are putting like a, and this is even the same way, this is, this is the one I got from Air Gas. This is, this is the same thing. It has this tray here that the welder fits in, and you can't open your door because your door hits it. Well, some people are grinding them off, or they're cutting them off, or they're raising this up uh, so that the door clears it, and that's fine. But then it can slide off the back or slide off the sides unless you tie it down, and then you're having to mess with the tie. And so I'm just leaving it in there, and I just tip it up like this a little bit with one hand, grab, I can't do this because I'm holding the camera, but I'll grab the handle right there with my other hand, tip it up, or open that latch, and then just open it, and then set it back down. And it's no big deal. You just tip it, open it, set it back down. When you want to close it, you just tip it again, close it, and set it back down. So that keeps it from sliding or falling off without putting some kind of lift kit underneath it so you can open your door. So that's my workaround and my solution for that. Anyway, off-road uh, welding cart, dude, I'm pretty excited. Rolling this off-road welding cart outside, I would like it a little wider actually, the axles. I think it would give it a little bit more stability. It kind of bounced around and tipped around. Of course, I had a welder on top and it didn't really want to fall over. Um, but, so on this, welding cart that I got from air gas I went ahead and welded the 5 8 rod on it also and I widened the axle I widened it even more so this platform width is somewhere around 12 inches 11 and a half or 12 inches and the original axle or the original wheel width as you can see was this is the original axle was 15 inches just over 15 inches so that's as wide as the wheel, rear wheels were. And of course the front wheels were even narrower. So what did this come out to? Let's see. About 22. <laughs> so I measured this piece of metal at 21. This piece of flat that I welded across here. And um, And again, I just welded these casters on. I didn't bolt them on. It was just much faster just to weld it. Tack weld it and be done. Okay. Much wider. I'm going to flip this handle over so the handle actually points up. It's not in the way of my MIG gun, so I don't have to worry about that. And I realized afterward when I pulled these old wheels off why this thing rolled so poorly and it's because there's no bearing here this is just a sleeve <laughs> so these are just sleeve wheels there's no bearing in there to turn it all and you can see um, why it was squeaking and making so much noise because these are just spinning on the shaft so you can see how the shafts all worn out from the wheel rolling on it that's why it's so hard to roll and I guess that's another real advantage of going to these um, some other type of wheel with a bearing on it. it is an upgrade because then it just rolls like a dream and you can put a lot of weight on it and and it rolls without any problem without any resistance so cool